Okay, today is going to be the very last video here on this channel. Uh, you say, well, you're going to be quitting then? No, it's just going to be a different ministry uh, from now on. And uh, when you say a different ministry, what do you mean? Well, it's no longer going to be named Husky 394 XP. Um, I'm going to be getting into a lot of things today. Uh, this is going to be the last video for my external hard drive project. So uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the things I've gone through in the last 10 years of uh, YouTube. Um, my time on YouTube, a lot has changed in those 10 years. A whole lot has changed. And I'm going to be talking about things the Lord has shown me in, in that time and the direction for the future, what's going to be happening. And um, so, but just, just is it, this is going to be, I'm just going to be talking. I don't really have any notes. I have some things written down here, um, but I'm going to be reading some scripture, but it's mostly just going to be about why the channel name was what it was originally, if you don't know. And, uh, you know, the, the name Husky 394 XP, where did it come from? Well, I am joined in studio today um, by Husky 394 XP. Here we go. Let's see if I can do this without pulling out my microphone thing. This is Husky 394 XP. This is my professional saw that I used back when I was logging. As you can see, I'll try to get in here close. Husky 394 XP. Husky is kind of an abbreviated version of Husqvarna, Swedish chainsaw. Um, actually, it's I think it's owned by BMW now, the Husqvarna company. But here you have this thing. This is a. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go over some statistics. If you find it boring, we'll skip ahead. Uh, for people that ask questions, uh, to avoid the questions down in the comments, I'm just going to answer it here. This is a 42-inch bar. Um, there were trees that I felled in the past that this bar was not long enough to get through them. Uh, here in Maine, northern Maine, trees really don't get this big, uh, so I really don't use it that much. But uh, it's a 404 pitch, 063 gauge. Um, to my knowledge, I'm going to stand it up this way. It's be a little bit easier to hold on to it. But to my knowledge, um, that's the biggest type of chain that you can get for handheld saw, uh, 404 pitch, 063 gauge. It had a 3 8 pitch on it when I first bought it, but um, it is a skip tooth chain. So if you can see that, skip tooth. So it's got, you know, teeth and then it, it skips. Normally you'd have more teeth on it than that, but it creates a really aggressive cut. And uh, it's quite a saw to use. It weighs just about 30 pounds. I don't know what the horsepower rating is on it, but it's a 94 cc, so it's bigger than a lot of kids' dirt bikes. Um, <clears throat> it's a it's a big saw, and this thing I used for years, and um, I've had different size bars on it and whatever else. But when I was logging, I did fell a lot of trees that were in the you know three foot range up to 40 inch range. So this 42 inch bar really came in handy, and um, and it's so funny this thing. Um, I've never let a woman touch this thing. It's just not going to happen. Um, you can call that sexist if you want. I don't really care. But I've let a few of the brethren, a few different people, two different men I've known, use this thing. And they all do the same thing without a doubt. They come in and they try to cut with it. And they put it about right here on the log. Not using the back here. These, these teeth things are called dogs. They don't use that. Big mistake. And they start to cut right about here they get the throttle up and they go down and the saw goes boom, like that and pulls forward and uh this thing it's you know it'll get through a log very quickly and uh sharpening is not real bad i've always sharpened them by hand but this is a real good saw and i was just hardcore into logging loved logging and um so that's what the, the channel started out as. So a lot of people over the years have wondered, what, what's this Husky 394 XP thing about? Well, right there, my chainsaw. Okay, and this is one of three that I own from back in the old days of logging. I'll put them down here now. And that won't be the last that you see of that saw in the future. I have some upcoming plans for it. Got to make sure I put it on a... Where did I put that paper towel at? The saw has a... Uh, has a tendency to kind of mark its spot, so to speak. Uh, bar oil, in other words. Don't really want that on my floor here, so I'll just 
stick that paper towel in underneath. But that's what it started out as, uh, logging and things. And, and um, you can see the oldest videos on my channel are of me felling trees with that saw right there. Uh, so I did use it. Um, I came from a very, very hard physical labor type of background. And I still do a lot of that on the side, not for a living anymore, but um, I've been through some things. And a lot of the pansies out there, little city boys that try to cut on this ministry, and I'll say it that way because I have no respect for them. I, I, I respect real men and some of these little pansies that are out there that live in the, in the city and whatever, and they try to attack me and say I don't know how to work and whatever, and they're working some office job or whatever else. Uh, yeah, sure, okay, whatever. I know how to work. All right. Uh, the Lord's put me through some things and I'm not saying that out of pride. I'm saying it as a, as a matter of fact. Okay. I know about pain. I know about working hard, physical jobs where your life is being risked and whatever else. I had very many close calls. This very Saul, the one time I was walking along on a tree after I'd felt it going up through and I didn't have my other saw with me that day. So I was using this thing to limb. It's not the best. And I slipped. It was, it, it, it the, it had rained a day before, so the log was kind of wet, the tree was wet, and I slipped a little bit, and it came back, and, it, and the bar hit me in the back of the leg and tore through my jeans into my boot and into my sock a little bit, never touched my leg. Um, so I've had close calls with that saw, and um, you work with that thing for a day, a whole day, and, uh, you know, good workout. But, you know, I just get a little bit tired and fed up with these uh, sissies out there that uh, make like to make fun of me and say I don't know how to work and whatever else. Um, you know, people can disagree with me, and that's fine. But when you just start to lie about me, um, you know, you're not going to get too far. So, whatever. Um, but I left the channel name as Husky 394 XP for a long time because, in all honesty, I prayed and I have prayed over the years of being on YouTube. I prayed very fervently, uh, Lord, do you want me to do this? Uh, do you want me to go back to the art world that I used to be in? Because I used to be a wood turner, an artistic wood turner slash carver, and I'd sell my work in art galleries. Again, you can watch my uh, one testimony thing about what I did for a living. And I show a lot of the pictures of it and, and whatever. Um, you know, I often question, do, do you want me in full-time ministry? Well, I've been through a lot of different things, a lot of changes mentally, a lot of you know, I entered the ministry as a single guy. Lord brought me my wife, and then the Lord gave us a, our son. And um, the Lord's done a lot in this ministry, and I've seen a lot of fruit and, and just incredible things the Lord has done. And so um, I'm all in now. And uh, I will be, you know, I always do physical work. I love it. But uh, I know the Lord is using me and has used me and is going to continue using me into the future. So i um, going to be talking about some of that stuff today. But uh, one mission that the Lord put me on uh, way back when I first got into ministry, even before YouTube, um, I was a new version user for many, many years. And the Lord showed me the truth of this King James Bible. And He showed me this is, this is His Word. And if I would live by this book and um, follow the teachings of Scripture, uh, that He would bless me. And so I've done that since my salvation. When I was 26 years old, I got saved. And uh, here we are, what, uh, 17 years later, I guess. Yeah, about 17 years later. And uh, I've lived by this book as much as I can. And... I've seen a lot of ministries that I very highly respected and regarded as being very faithful to the Word and whatever, and I've seen them become unfaithful. And I've learned later on that they didn't follow God's Word uh, and His teachings in His Word. Um, and I've tried to, to the best of my abilities. Have I failed sometimes? Yeah, I absolutely have. Have I said things I shouldn't have said and done things I shouldn't have done and whatever else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never claimed to be perfect. Um, but one thing the Lord put in my mind and that is, preach the word. Uh, don't add to it with Greek or Hebrew. Don't try to. Don't even waste your time trying to learn Greek and Hebrew and trying to defend the Receptus and whatever. Just the book, just the book. 
Don't quote a whole bunch of historical sources and a bunch of always take it back to the book as the final authority. And that's what I have done. And even my worst enemy will admit, yeah, he does exalt the King James Bible. Yes, he does. You can disagree with me and whatever else, but it's been about the book. King James Video Ministries has been about the book. And I find it interesting that uh, me staying true to the King James Bible, um, I've actually forced other people to stay true to the King James Bible. The enemies of this ministry. Um, it's become quite unpopular to go and say, well, the Greek word should be, or the Greek word should you know, say this or that or whatever. Um, a lot of my enemies that I've argued with and things back, over, back and forth over the years, they are forced to go to the book. Because they know if they don't, I can say, oh, you're not a Bible believer. So the people trying to infiltrate the Bible believing movement, I've even forced them to stick mostly to the King James Bible. Not mostly, they have to stick to the King James Bible or I call them out. Prove them to be false. So I rejoice about that. That uh, the Lord has helped me in this small ministry here. Uh, we're not huge or whatever else i realize we we have reached a lot of people but i'm saying in comparison to some ministries uh, the lord has helped me to turn people to the king james bible and that uh, i'm greatly honored to be put into that position by the lord and i will be doing that more in the future okay um and like i said my future is in ministry uh i could still physically use that chainsaw not up here because the trees are too small <laughs> You know, it's just been overlogged up here. That's the problem. I mean, you go way back, uh, you know, 100, 200 years ago or whatever else. Well, yeah, the trees would have been huge up here. Um, but the, the trees, the timber industry up here is just, ugh. Irving is the big corporation up here. And they just rape the farce with their big mechanized feller bunchers and all this other stuff. I mean, they just, it's terrible. But uh, Lord doesn't want that. Um we were talking about this earlier, and my wife said it's almost like the young Sheffy versus the old Sheffy. The young Sheffy was kind of indecisive, and he was kind of not real sure of himself in terms of being in ministry. And he was trying to get official sanction at one point, and, and he was trying to, you know, make himself look good and whatever. And, and he just got to a point where he realized God just wants me to do what I'm supposed to do without oversight. And, um, and, that's, and he, she said, that's kind of like your ministry. And uh, yeah. It kind of is. Um, I, I first got on YouTube, I was so nervous. I was so worried about people, what they said, and, and I'd get people attacking me, and it would just, I'd, I'd get just, my blood pressure would go up, and I'd, and I'd think, oh, man. And, and, I'd, and I'd just, I'd, I wouldn't sleep and whatever else. And, and uh, that changed over the years. And um, it doesn't bug me like it once did. And uh, people trying to get to me and trying to get me angry, yeah, I, I fell for it a bunch of times, the servants of, of Satan. Uh, they would do things and say things and attack my marriage and attack my wife and even attack my son and whatever else. And, and uh, I get mad still, but uh, they're not going to push my buttons anymore. Um, I know how, I know why they continue to attack me. So the more attacks I get, the more I'm going to attack their positions that are making them upset. Um, I've arrived, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm just simply saying, you know what? I know now the Lord is saying ministry for your future. Um, I'm done with the other stuff. And uh, you say, well, you're just really going to really kick YouTube stuff into high gear? No, I don't think so. Back again, when I first got into ministry, I was thinking to myself, you know, I'd see these other people and I'd see, oh, wow, they're, they're getting a lot of subscribers and whatever. And I remember, you know, I'd get, I got my first 100 subscribers and I thought I was a big shot, you know, and, and then it just kept going up and up and up over the years, never monetized. And, um, and I used to dream, you know, I used to think to myself, what would it be like someday to have a hundred thousand subscribers? Never going to happen. Never going to happen. I believe the YouTube has gone like this and I've kind of peaked a little bit and I think it's going to start to go down now. Um, I'm seeing my the subscriber numbers uh, slowing down and it's just I've seen back when I first got on YouTube there was a lot more um, honest I don't want to use the word debate but there was a lot more um, people would discuss things in a more civilized manner and you could prove people wrong and they would kind of say oh you know hey and it just 
I've seen this thing on YouTube where people's hearts are becoming hardened and they're just saying, I don't care what scriptures you show. I don't care what facts you show. I don't care how much study or research or whatever. I am staying with my position and I don't care. And people are taking sides. You know, you got the Heil side, you got the easy believism side, you got the Lordship Salvation, Catholic works type of side. You got you got all these different sides. People are just hardening and and getting into it. YouTube is 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 a joke. Just as simple as that. I mean, I mean, you know, I I appreciate the fact that it's been a platform. The Lord has kept the doors open here for people to come along and see things. I know a lot of you in other countries, it would have been impossible for you to find me here in America if it hadn't been for YouTube. Uh, I understand that. I understand that. And it was the Lord that allowed that thing to happen. Um, and I don't. I don't say, oh well, thank you so much, YouTube liberals that run the thing for uh, being open-minded enough to have me here. I, they've messed, again, they've messed with my channel. I get people, I, again, I lost track of people that, that rate me and they say, you know, that they had the Google notifications thing, little bell or whatever clicked. And uh, it'll go a month or two and they think, I better check in and see what, you know, why isn't he making any videos? And there's a whole bunch of videos. And they say, why wasn't I contacted? I've, I've had people write me and they say, why did you delete, delete my comments? I say, what was your comment? And they tell me and I say, I didn't delete anything like that. Um, you know, there's been people messing with my account now for, for many years. Um, it's the Lord. I'm going to give the Lord complete credit uh, for keeping this ministry going, for keeping the channel open. And um, so what I see for the future in terms of YouTube, I see it going to start to go like this and crash and burn. Um, I know a lot of people, even secular people, are fed up. You know, those of us that have been on YouTube for 10 years or so, you remember the way it was back in the early, early days. There's a lot more freedom. There's a lot less censorship and the whole deal. Um, I mean, YouTube's never been perfect. I understand that. But they're just constantly changing things. And you, what is this all about? And stupid stuff here. And, and I've seen a lot of people, secular people, saying, I can't wait for something new to come out because when it does, I'm ditching YouTube. I just want to get away from it. Um, yeah, I understand that. Uh, I have never felt totally free to be myself on YouTube. I'm always having, having to guard my speech and whatever else. I, this politically correct platform and and I've had so many threats over the years of we're going to flag your channel and have it taken down and people writing that in the comments and private messaging me and threatening me and things over the years. And so I'm longing for the day when uh, YouTube is not going to be the main part of this ministry. And it's not going to be a quick transition. Um, again, this channel is not going to be existing after the first of the year in the terms of it's not going to be Husky 394 XP anymore. It's going to be a new name, um, you know, and more related to me and the ministry, King James Video Ministries. And uh, so there's going to be a, a totally new thing there. Um, but I don't expect it to go for another 10 years or something like that. I don't expect that for one minute. And I am looking forward to a technology in the future. If they come out with something that whereby there would be a some kind of a player, a video player, that could be put onto a, a website. You'd pay a fee to have the video player and you could live stream. You could, you could put up as many videos as you want and it's not going to slow down your website or whatever else, and it's not a, a video hosting website. And is there something out there like that right now? I have no idea. Um, if there is, it's probably still kind of buggy and problematic. But I think that there's going to be technology in the future that is going to be more user-friendly and uh, not tied to a, a platform like YouTube that mainstream media can come in and mess around with and whatever else. I, I'm hoping that there's something more free in the future. Um, Freedom-based. I'm not talking about free as in monthly fees or something. <laughs> you know, I'd be willing to pay money for an actual, some kind of a thing to host video. And, and of course, um, offline video. Again, 10 years ago, DVDs were very, very popular. Um, people were still buying DVDs. People were still, you know, whatever. And there's still people that do use DVDs. And so I will you know, be coming out with some of that stuff in the future. Um, just shorter, more concise, you know, miniature studies or whatever that are less than an hour that people can do, you know, have DVDs of. 
along with the big external hard drive project that has all of my work from the last 10 years. Um, so again, there's going to be a lot of different things in the future. I'm looking forward to getting into book writing at some point in time. Again, uh, definitely not a high tech type of a thing. And I don't want ebooks or anything like that. I don't like ebooks. I've never liked that. I don't like looking at a screen. I like looking at paper, you know? Um, so, uh, there's a lot of plans for the future. Um, but one thing it's not going to be happening is I'm not going to be going back to the logging world or whatever else. And again, the, the little idiots out there will say, well, it's cause he's too lazy and, uh, whatever. Listen, it's a whole lot easier to make a living as an artist or as a logger or whatever else, okay? You go out there, you're by yourself, you don't have people making fun of you and cutting up your work and whatever else and stuff. You know, I would cut up my own work with my saw, you know, cut up the logs. Little joke there. Um, but, you know, uh, there's a lot easier ways to make a living than just to have your name just bashed and trashed and whatever else and people lying about you just it's incredible so that's going to be the the plans of the future um i know that that uh, the lord has used me now and and i can say that that uh and i don't say this is a bragging thing but i know that that i'm his servant and um i've changed a lot of people's lives and uh, the lord working through me and he gets all the glory for that. I'm not going to take any glory for that. But the Bible is very plain. We're going to be reading the scriptures here in just a minute about a man being God's servant. And I understand that. And it doesn't mean I'm, you know, untouchable man of God, Jack Hiles type or something like that. That's, that's not it. It's just that when God uses you in a powerful way, you have to realize that and just say, okay, I'm, I'm all in. And I know the Lord has plans for me in the future. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm not all of a sudden going to get enough money and just quit and go live in the Bahamas or something like that. You know, get a private jet and fly around the world vacationing or something. That stuff doesn't even appeal to me at all. Um, so, in the future, what is King James Video Ministries going to focus on? I have seven things. Uh, number one, first and foremost, what is the plans of the future of this ministry? Um, I'm going to continue to expose Roman Catholicism as being the most evil organization in the world. And it is. Uh, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 17 that she is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. All right, Mystery Babylon talking about there. It's obviously the Roman Catholic Church, not America. Sorry, little Stevie Anderson and your satanic little following. The Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. If it's an abomination, it ties back to the Vatican every single time, right? And what's my main motivation in doing that? Because I want to see Catholics get out of that system. And I know that there's a very strong spiritual bondage there that holds Catholics into this system. I mean, these, these children around them, you know, families having children getting raped and they still stay in that system. Um, there's a spiritual tie there, a very strong spiritual tie. So I am going to be attacking Roman Catholicism, but I'm going to be focusing more on evangelizing the Roman Catholics and getting them out of that system, showing them that their system is wicked and full of lies and everything else, and showing them that I love them, showing them that I care about them. And I do. I really honestly do. I get a little sarcastic in things and get a little bit uh, you know, rude and crude and whatever else I say, but behind it is love. I truly, genuinely love the Roman Catholic people, and I want to see them get out of that system. I would hate to see some Catholic couple out there watch one of my videos and say, eh, you know, whatever, and they take their child off and, the, and their child gets raped by their priest. Oh, that would be terrible. You know, and, and it just, it tears me to pieces to see these children that are being raped by these priests. It just, oh, my word, it's so upsetting. I hate to see people in bondage to Roman Catholicism, so I'm going to do my best to fight against it. Number two, defense of the King James Bible and exposing the Vatican versions. Um, I'm not going to give it away, but, uh, that's where, uh, Husky 394 XP is going to be coming back in, in the future. I have some plans. Won't say anything more about that, but, uh, maybe you can imagine where I'm going with that, um, in terms of destroying new versions. I'll really give you a good hint there. But, uh, I believe that defending the King James Bible is another thing that's very, very important. And not just, you know, well, the word here is best translated in the King James. That stuff is just whatever. 
You know, I'm saying read it, teach it, believe it's God's word, okay, and attack the new versions, all right, and show, compare them with this. This is the standard. So that's what I'm going to be doing. We're doing a lot more attacking these new versions and coming out with better ways, you know, little tracks or little DVDs or whatever else that we can, you know, that the body of Christ can have to quickly give to people if they have an ESV or a AS, or not ASV, New American Standard Version, NIV, whatever. Boom, there you go. A quick, very hard hitting tract or DVD or whatever else that's going to make problems for these new versions. Um, again, showing that the Catholic Church and the Second Vatican Council came out and said that, that uh, they can make translations with separated brethren and whatever else and show the fact that Catholics are sitting on the translation teams of a lot of these new versions. All right. Um, the uh, Common English Bible, the CEB, literally had Jesuits sitting on the, the translation committee. So, and of course, the Nestle's text um, had uh, Cardinal Carlo Maria Martini, a Jesuit cardinal, sitting on the board of editors there with the Nestle's text. So, be showing a lot more of that type of stuff in the future. Number three, true salvation and the new birth. Okay? Um, being born again. I'm going to be preaching very hard on that. I've, I've hashed it out with people on the meaning of repentance and, and what is the thing of a changed life and how much changed life and do you become sinlessly perfect and do you have eternal security as a result and do you, can you lose it, can you this, can you that. You know, I've gone over that stuff for 10 years, back and forth, arguing with all the people out there and everything else. I'm just going to be preaching it without apology in the future. Okay? That's another thing that's going to be very hardcore. I'm going to be preaching the gospel in very, very unique locations and whatever else. I have some real big plans on that. Like I, uh, if you know anything about the ministry, we have uh, some 4K cameras now. And I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with that in the future, a lot higher definition types of things. And um, some very unique salvation uh, preaching and, and teaching. Uh, number four, dispensational Pre time of Jacob's trouble catching up, you know, or preacher rapture if you want to call it that, and premillennial teaching. Okay, um, I'm going to be very hardcore on that stuff in the future. I'm going to be coming out with a lot of information, um, proving that the Bible, uh, what it means to rightly divide the word of truth. The Lord's helped me to come out with some good stuff on that in the past, and I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more teaching and preaching dispensationally and defending the what people would call the pre-trib rapture. I'm going to be doing some real hardcore stuff on that, um, really hard-hitting, uh, showing that the post-tribbers are just, they're just papists, they're work salvationists. Uh, they, they need to be purified by, by coming future time period. They spit in the face of Jesus Christ because, you see, His death, burial, and resurrection you know, on the cross, that wasn't enough. Okay? We need to go into a time where we can be further purified and it'll just push the Jews out of the way. We'll just kind of shove the nation of Israel out of the way. It's not the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the great tribulation for the church. Oh, you know. And I'm going to be a lot rougher on those, you know, people uh, defending dispensational teaching. Because uh, it's, you know, if you're saved, you'll get dispensational teaching. If you're lost, you aren't going to get it. Um, so that's going to be there. And I'm going to be coming out with DVDs and whatever else on that. Uh, number five, no church buildings. Again, I've been a little bit wishy-washy on that over the years. Well, you know, you hear some of my really old stuff about a house church, and I say, if you can find a good King James Bible-believing church, go to it. Uh-uh, no, not anymore. I've been to every type of King James Bible-believing church. I've been to Hiles types of church. I've been to Ruckman types of churches. I've been to Bob Jones types of King James Baptist churches, whatever. I've been to all the different types of Baptist churches. They're all crooked. They're all corrupt. Okay? Uh, worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth, at home, worshiping Him seven days a week. Church building people are wicked apostates. They go and they say, well, I was there, you know, I'm there every time the doors are open. Well, that's a shame. That's only, what, two, three days a week? I'm there seven days a week. You ought to catch up a little bit, you know. <laughs> um, you, you get away from the whole church building thing, the little social clubs that those places are. That's all they are, you know. And you get away from that and your relationship with the Lord will just grow and you'll be much closer to the Lord. All right. Number six, another thing that I have done a little bit of work on, but it's something that has been a personal study for myself and my wife, and of course our son is a big part of that, um, and that is proper nutrition. Um, 
I will tell you that I'm understanding that more and more as time goes by and the importance of proper nutrition. Uh, you're going to see that in the Bible. You're going to see the thing of, of Paul. He's traveling around with Luke, the beloved physician. I mean, what was the deal there? What, what's the purpose? Well, when you get into ministry and you're really serving the Lord, if your nutrition is failing and faltering, you're going to be just an easy target for the devil. Plain and simple. If you're eating junk food and a bunch of trash and whatever else, and, you know, back in the first century, New Testament times, um, there wasn't a whole lot of junk food, okay? Uh, people wouldn't have wasted their time with that. Today, literally, I heard a woman say the one time, natural health woman, she said that food on the store shelf is industrial waste. Yeah, there's a lot of things that they're putting in there, high fructose corn syrup and being probably the biggest culprit, but aspartame and a bunch of these other things, and they are terrible. They are neurotoxins. What is that? That means it's literally put into the food to make your brain think it tastes good. I kid you not. I kid you not. And I have the science to back it up too, by the way. I can prove it. And uh, the Lord showed us a lot, not just on the thing of pharmaceutical drugs being really toxic and bad and actually the ingredients that go into a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs, the petrochemicals that are in them things and the side effects that they have and all this other stuff. You know, I mean, the Lord's been showing us a whole lot of stuff. Um, you know, uh, the thing of natural free birthing, uh, we did that with our son. I was the one that delivered my son, um, you know, and, and uh, just raising him on natural health and things. And, uh, you know, it's ironic because he was never sick until we went on our trip and we went to my wife's, you know, parents' place, my in-laws, and uh, they have fluoridated water and they don't really care about natural health and whatever else. And we tried to, to no, no, but they give us food and you know, kind of sneak, oh, here, try this. Oh, 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 you didn't want that? Oh, I'm sorry, you know. And all of a sudden my son's sick for the very first time in his life after going there. So, and he's, you know, he has to just detox from it. It's not if you've had this bad stuff in your, in your life and whatever, if you're eating junk food that you're just finished. I mean, I ate junk food for over 30 years. I mean, I, I, soda pop and, you know, McDonald's and Burger King and candy bars and candy of all sorts and whatever else. I, I trashed my health for 30 years. Okay. I mean, I was raised on, you know, sugar and whatever else. I, I was looking at my baby book the one time and there were literally references in there. My mom was making about how she was putting sugar into my food so that I would eat all my food, white sugar. Yeah. That set me on a good course for the rest of my life being, you know, sugar addict and whatever else. So, um, and there are healthy types of sugar too, by the way, that are much, much better than, uh, I was going to say better there, um, is much better than, you know, your white sugar. There's cane sugar. There's, you know, different types of things there. Um, so I'm not, I'm not somebody that says cut out all sugar, you know, you cut it down, but moderation, you know, but, uh, raw honey, of course, is extremely, it's a superfood. So that's another type of sweetener that you can use. Uh, you don't have to cut out anything sweet out of your diet. Uh, there's, again, there's just so much out there in the natural health world that is, is incredible, and you can you feel so much better. Um, proper rest, proper nutrition, proper exercise. These are all things that we're going to be talking more about in the future. Um, again, you know, I worked as a professional chef uh, for a number of years, and um, I like to cook. And I've had different people say, you know, could you share share with us the kind of meals that you eat and whatever else. I might do some of that in the future. Um, affordable, you know, natural health type of foods that you can make. You know, a lot of women, they get saved. They've had a really rough life in the past. They don't know how to cook. They're saying, what do I do? A lot of brethren out there that, you know, you don't know how to cook or whatever else or don't really know how to get into natural health type of eating. And I'd like to do more of that type of thing in the future as well. Do uh, more cooking and whatever and show you how to, how to eat affordably and how to eat according to the way God wants you to eat um, so you can get away from all the junk food out there that makes you feel terrible, okay? and gives you all kinds of diseases and everything else. Um, and of course, you know, as we advance further towards the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, before the catching up, things are going to get a lot worse. So again, you're going to need to have really good health in that time period and this time, you know, as we, as things get worse. Number seven, um, uncompromising teaching from the King James Bible and from the King James Bible alone, as I said earlier. Uh, you're not going to hear me get to a point where I start to say, now the Greek word here is blah, 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 whatever. I could care less about the Greek word. Uh, okay, um, the Lord 
inspired those men back in 1611, 1604 to 1611, he inspired those men to make his word into the English language. I'm not going to mess around with Greek, okay? Um, what's the point of it? I shift the authority then away from the King James Bible and not even to the Greek, but to me. Um, that's sinful, okay? That's wickedness. I don't care who does it. If they start messing around with Greek words and whatever else, and it, I'm not saying, you know, some guy says, well, the Greek word here, some Bibles would translate it this way, and this is why the King James translated it that way, and that's the correct translation. Well, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But when you start getting into, you have to go to the Greek to get deeper meaning, then you're shifting the authority away from this book right here, and that is wickedness. If you're going to do that, if you're going to do the Greek and the Hebrew, then you just read from the Greek and the Hebrew. Don't ever even touch a King James Bible. Get your dirty hands off of it. All right? Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to preach this King James Bible. And it's controversial and, and whatever else. Um, I think if you've followed the ministry for a while, you know that I'm not afraid of controversy. Uh, again, you know, the, the Lord has helped me. Um, a lot of my character that, that He's built in me over the years is because I've worked in very dangerous jobs. I've lived very dangerously. Um, you know, I've gone very, very fast on motorcycles. I've had some really bad accidents. You know, you run a chainsaw the size of the one I have here and you're felling trees that are 90 feet tall. Um, yeah, you know, and I've had, you know, I had a limb come down and hit me across the head the one time many years ago, knocked me out just cold. Um, I've had um, this chainsaw right here with a skip tooth. It has a bad tendency of grabbing little sticks or bark pieces or whatever else and flinging them back at you because it's got, you know, more space between the cutters. And, you know, the one time I was cutting this shag bark hickory tree, and it's these big the pieces of bark kind of go off to the side like that. They kind of pull away from the tree and they kind of go off to the side. And I usually wear a hard hat and hearing protection and things. And, and it even has a face shield, which I'd flip down sometimes. But I didn't have it because I was out in the field. These guys had cut this, they felled this big shag bark hickory tree. And then they wanted me to come cut it up. And so I had my big saw and I was cutting it and it pulled, this big skip tooth chain pulled off one of these big, long pieces of bark and just flung it back and hit me right in the forehead right here and just just cut me open and there was just blood just flowing down over my face and I put the saw down and I'm going oh boy that was bad you know <laughs> uh, I've been through some stuff like that okay a lot of my little sissy enemies out there they don't know anything about that type of stuff and uh, that's why they get so offended by this ministry um, and that's why a lot of the other preachers out there will compromise uh, a lot of these Baptists out there the little smooth-faced little baby Baptists and whatever else. Um, they've been raised in their little Baptist churches and they, they don't know anything about hardships and, and bad things and whatever else. And, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to these guys for years and they are some of the biggest sissies, effeminate little girls. They're so worried about offending people and they, let's not talk about the Catholics because we have some Catholic people coming tonight so I don't want you to offend the Catholics. And, and, and we have some people here that do use the new version, so don't, don't say the King James Bible is perfect and, and whatever. I thank God that I ha don't have to be under the ministry of these, these effeminate wimps. I thank the Lord for counting me faithful and putting me into the ministry and saying, okay, now you get up there and you preach my word. And I'm very much aware of the fact that I'm accountable. And if I'm wrong on something, I want to answer to God. People say, who are you accountable to? You know, who's Denley you're accountable to? He doesn't even meet with anybody. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's amazing how people would say that when they don't even know me personally. But who am I accountable to? I'm accountable to God. And if I get messed up, God's going to crush me. But I want to read a couple psalms here real quickly, two psalms, and uh, just really kind of sum up what I've been through in the last 10 years. And... Uh, kind of where this ministry is going in the future. And uh, we're going through the book of Psalms right now, and it just really means a lot to me. And um, so, it's going to go through this. Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. Yeah, if you've learned from this ministry, and I've taught you things, Let's magnify the Lord together. You go out and you spread this truth out to other people. You know? That's what it's all about. Verse 4, I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. But he has over the years. 
They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's amazing. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Let me just encourage you, some of you out there. Um, I know some of you are thinking about you know full-time ministry and whatever else. Um, serve the Lord and see what he does and where he leads and where he how he directs. I've had many, many times of just being afraid and just, oh, how am I going to pay this or how am I going to do that or whatever else? And the Lord always provides. He always does. Um, you work for the Lord and He won't let you down. Okay? Uh, verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days? that he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Yeah, another good thing. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Amen, I've seen that too. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. That's the gospel that I preach. Um, he's come to heal the brokenhearted. Come unto me, all ye, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you. Okay. He wants to put his yoke upon you, but he can't do it if unless you're broken and contrite. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. <laughs> Good night, man. The, the afflictions that I've gone through in the last couple of years or last 10 years of being in ministry and the bad things that have happened and the, the stress and, and the hindrances to work I've been trying to get done and just uh, all, this, all this stuff. I mean, my word. Yet here I am. The Lord's delivered me. Verse 20, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. <laughs> you know, and again, I can say that thing with a hearty amen. I have been in so many accidents and just horrible stuff happening and, and oh my word. I mean, you, you know, I got my saw still here at my feet. You know, I don't need to pick it up again right now because I don't want to get the Bible dirty. But, you know, I've been through some rough stuff. I've never broken one bone my whole life in spite of the ATV accidents and motorcycle accidents and, you know, vehicle accidents and and just rough, rough, rough life. <laughs> never broken a bone. And people I know that out there, they want to kill me and whatever else, and they've never been able to. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Hello to my enemies. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Psalm 35. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler, and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear, and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded, and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back, and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, Interesting, net. You'll see that thing throughout this, you know, internet, you know, the web. People try to, you know, lay things out there for me to, to mess me up. With which, or which, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Again, you know, you disagree with me. Okay, go have a life, you know, get a life, you know, do whatever you want. Why are these people trying to mess my ministry up? Yeah. This is my prayer here for those people. Verse 8, let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself. Into that very destruction let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him, yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. False witnesses did rise up, they laid to my charge things that I knew not. <laughs> 
<laughs> man, can I relate to that? People lie about me stuff, and I think, what? I never said that. I didn't, huh? I never did that. What are you talking about? Verse, verse 12, they rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. Um, a lot of you don't see that. There have been times I've prayed for my worst enemies. Sincerely, earnestly prayed for them. And just, Lord, please, if it, it's possible, I don't know. I, where are they at with you? I, I have no idea. I know they're not saved, but please, Lord, could you... Could you convict them or something you know they're they're going to hell i know they are i don't care who my enemy is i don't care which one of them out there um i'd like to see him get saved i don't want to see him go to hell verse 15 but in my adversity they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me, and ceased not. <laughs> with hypocritical mockers in feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction, my darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eye hath seen it. We've seen these videos exposing him. Oh, he's, he's terrible and he's wicked and he's all this other stuff. This thou hast seen, O Lord, keep not silence, O Lord, be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord my God, according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. And again, you know, I want the Lord's judgment in my life. I want him to straighten me out. If he says, hey, you know, Brian, that needs to go. And hey, that thing over there, you got to quit doing that. And hey, don't preach this. And you need to, you know, you've been repeating this thing for a long time. I repeated the Trinity thing for, for years and years and years. And, you know, the Lord convicted me. Is it in my word? Well, no, Lord. Well, then what are you saying it for? You can see where it's coming from. You see all these other things and what it's really, what the Trinity teaching is really all about. Yeah, yeah, you know, okay, I can see it. Well, then quit saying it. You know, well, that might put me at odds with some of the brethren. doesn't matter. It's about the book. This is the authority, you know. And it's so funny, too, because I've had, I had a brother and he said, you know, uh, that uh, I, I say premillennial and I say pre-trib rapture and I say uh, millennial kingdom and whatever. And he said those aren't you know Bible terms, okay. Um, but again, it's not a it's not. I don't have to base the whole system. I can call it something else and just teach it right from Scripture. Um, that's point number one. But point number two, um, the Catholics aren't for the pre-trib rapture or premillennialism or the millennial kingdom. They aren't for those three things, but they're for the Trinity. Hmm. Uh, verse 25, let them not say in their hearts, ah, so we have, so would we have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous calls. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Yeah. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Interesting, because they're going to be clothed with shame and dishonor that go into the time of Jacob's trouble. You can't buy or sell unless you have the mark. What are they going to do? Well, they're going to starve to death more than likely. And they're saying that they're going into it. It's not me, you know, well, I hate these uh, Anderson people and whatever else and all the little cult followers of Stephen Anderson. And they're just, you know, I don't believe that they're saved. They're not going up with the, the rapture or catching up, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're going to go in. They're saying it of themselves. Okay. They are saying that they're going into that time period. So what's going to happen? Oh, well, they're going to fulfill verse 26 there. 
But if you're a friend of the ministry, verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous calls. Um, I give God credit for this ministry. But you have to remember also that this is something that God put into my heart to do, and He's given me the strength to do it. And again, I'm not trying to take glory or whatever here, but I have to speak foolishly sometimes. This is my righteous calls. God gave me this mission, and I have to do this thing for Him. And if you favor this righteous calls, then shout for joy when you see the Lord you know, helping me to bring out something and helping us to move forward in the ministry. Um, favor this righteous calls. Uh, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. See, see again, understanding things there. You have to speak foolishly sometimes and say, you know, Paul says that, you know, the Lord's made me an apostle and I'm, I'm, you know, the Lord's done great things through me and whatever else. I have to speak foolishly here because people start to tear down your character. They start to say, oh, God's not for him. God's not doing anything. You have to say, okay, this is my righteous cause. This is what the Lord has put me, put me in this ministry. The Lord, I am his servant. Okay, that's there. All right, again, going back to the Sheffy thing. Young Sheffy was kind of iffy. I don't really know. Should I get under this organization or should I get somebody's permission to do? And finally, it just got to the point where he said, me and the Lord. And a lot of people favored Sheffy's righteous calls. But look what happens. Um, be glad that favor my righteous calls. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. You know what the prosperity of me is going to mean when the Lord gives us enough money to be able to get a new ministry location closer to our property, um, it's going to be meaning more information coming out, more souls being saved, more lives being changed by this ministry. I am the Lord's servant and I'm going to serve him with the rest of my life. There's never going to, I mean, it, it doesn't even enter my mind of, you know, quitting the ministry and going off to some tropics, tropical area or going into doing this or doing... I can't imagine a day going by where I'm not talking about Jesus Christ with somebody. Um, and I want to just, just give more and more of my life to the Lord. Again, you know, what we've done for years and years, going back to the nutritional thing, um, it's, it's just been a thing. We, I've studied things and there's been times I've tried to take nutritional some kind of natural cure or whatever, and you think, whoa, okay, that doesn't work, you know, or things. I experiment with this stuff on myself. I'm not going to recommend anything to people unless I've done it myself. It's My whole life is about serving Jesus Christ. That's the whole thing. Um, and you say, well, I don't believe that you're a servant. Okay, then go someplace else, okay? Go someplace else and find somebody that does what we do here and support them. It's quite simple. And uh, so that's basically going to be it. That's This is uh, the last video under the name Husky 394 XP. Um, when the first of the year happens, uh, this, this video will be the final video for the external hard drive project. And once that's done, then I can get in there. I actually do have to edit a little bit of some of the videos there. I'm going to probably try to make a list of all the videos that it will be on that thing and bring it out as a PDF file on the website. I don't know, that's going to take a long time to do. Um, because I did originally have a list, but the problem is it, it just didn't format correctly and, and it was just, ugh, it was a problem. And I had to add in more things and change the numbering system. And so um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet because it's going to be a huge, huge issue. Um, but we'll see with the external hard drive thing. But I got to, working on our tax number, you know, getting that all back and going again. And, uh, of course, I'll have to go in and get the, the web store up and running again. Um, and, of course, the in investment of buying a bunch of external hard drives. Uh, so um, that's what I'm going to be doing. But uh, look for um, less YouTube presence in the future, uh, more kind of offline type of work that we're going to be doing. And um, I'd really love to be able to have some kind of a technology in the future that makes video um, much more, you know, that you can put it a player or something on a website and I don't even know how it all would work. But that's what we're looking for in the future. And uh, so that's going to be it. Um, as of the first of the year, the channel name is going to change 
and um, yeah, it's it's not going to be a, a major change right away. I'm still going to be doing videos. I'm still going to be coming out with, you know, whatever, same kind of stuff I've been doing. But um, I'm going to be a lot more focused and a lot more dedicated to this cause in the future. Um, I guess the Lord's kind of helped me to mature quite a bit, and um, always going to be sarcastic. Always, it's my dry sense of humor, my weird sense of humor. Some people don't get it, you know. I I, I do it. Uh, I joke around and things like that, and and I'm not I'm not hate filled or whatever. But you know, it, that's still going to be there. But I'm going to be, you know, more um, careful with with things that I say in the future because uh, I really do have a heart of, for seeing people get saved, genuinely saved, and I'm going to be preaching the new birth. That's what I'm going to be preaching, and uh, the changed life that comes as a result of true salvation, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I'm not going to be apologizing or whatever else. Just going to be, boom, hard hitting, and um, and we'll see. I'm going to be going after people, um, definitely a, a lot, uh, a lot more pointed, a lot more um, focused, and going after very wicked false prophets out there. Um, so, a lot of big plans for the future. Uh, so I just want to thank everybody out there that has been with me all these years. Or if you're just new and you've only been with me for a short time, I want to thank you for your support. Um, again, your prayers. Um, you get behind a servant of God like myself and you say, okay, you know, he's doing things that I, I couldn't do and I don't want to do and whatever else. And and um, and you, you say, I'm going to give him my prayers. I'm going to pray for this guy. Uh, don't make it just a, oh, when we think about it, you know, make it a daily thing, Okay. <clears throat> um, I can't go forward alone. Uh, I'll go forward alone in the sense of I'm not going to have anybody ruling over me as a church governing, you know, what? don't think so. Um, I'm not going to be a Baptist, official Baptist missionary or official Methodist or, you know, whatever. Um, Jesus Christ is the head of the church, so he'll be above me, but uh, nobody else. And um, But I don't. I can't venture into this thing just without anybody praying for me or whatever else. Um, it's going to be very important to have prayer in the future. And um, to those of you out there that do support the ministry, thank you very much for that. And um, your money is going to go towards a ministry that's going to push um, things. I should how, how would I even say that? We're going to do, be doing some things in the future that I'm not aware of anybody else doing. And uh, some very, very unique content coming out in the future and like i said it's going to be youtube for a while but i don't i don't believe that it's going to be wow we're almost at thirty thousand subscribers here at the end of 2018 and another year from now it's going to be sixty thousand. nope i see it actually starting to go down downhill um as more and more persecution uh, comes upon christians i think that we're going to see less and less of our stuff being out there and quite frankly i think the you know the time is coming the book of amos talks about it where the lord says about i'm going to send a famine in the land not of thirst for water or here or uh, hunger for bread but of hearing the words of the lord and they shall wander from sea to sea you know find the lord, word of the lord and they won't find it paraphrasing there but i think it's, that's what we're going to see i think a lot of this thing is it's not just uh, people are getting more wicked. I think it's actually the Lord starting to say, okay, I'm going to withdraw the truth from people. He's going to send people strong delusion that they should belie, that, excuse me, that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned. Okay. Um, so I think at that time period is, is, is starting to, we're starting to see it, that the falling away is in full effect and that falling away eventually leads to the strong delusion. It kind of transitions. And um, our job as Christians in this time period is to, you know, kind of guard, to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints, but also to kind of start putting out materials for the people that are going to be here when the catching up happens. Uh, those people who didn't really understand the truth or whatever else, uh, people that are going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, so that's a whole other issue. But that's going to be it. So uh, the channel is going to change, and uh, this will be the very last video that I have that I will be doing under the name Husky three ninety four XP. So we will see you with the new ministry and the new direction for the ministry. 
as far as, uh, well, you know, I've been over it. <laughs> so not going to be any more long-winded here. I'm just going to get this video done and get it edited and uploaded. And then you won't be seeing anything from me till end of the new year. Sometime um, <clears throat> we're going to start getting the external hard drive project ready. Going to get the web store back up and, um, and a lot of new plans coming, a lot of uh, big stuff uh, in the works. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.